The central processing unit, AKA the CPU, they are the heart and soul of any computer. They go into the motherboard. It's in this case, the one sitting under this nice fancy blue LED. And we like to think that they either work or they don't work. And I know in my history of using tech, when I've been doing extreme overclocking, I have uh, burnt up some of these in the past, most of the time having fun. However, sometimes it's a very rare case, you can get a faulty CPU. And in fact, it's so rare that we don't like to think of it as a problem or really anyone never really diagnoses it as a problem when a computer starts malfunctioning. However, in this case, this PC right here has come back to me now the second time from a client, or well, should I say ex-client now because, and uh, put it this way, he, he wasn't happy to say the least. Here's the thing with this PC. I have replaced every single component but the CPU. So today we're gonna to take a look at this computer and then see what's wrong and see how you can identify a faulty CPU if you ever come into one. Oh God, guys, my computer's smoking up. It's smoking up, guys. Gotcha. I have never seen a background like this before. Mm. So we're now on the desktop and we've got two programs here, which one of them's called Unigine Heaven Benchmark, which is for the graphics card, and the other's called Prime95. Both of these are free to download. I'll put the links in the description below for you guys. But Prime95 is the one that we're gonna focus on today. This one will test pretty much everything. Uh, so if we open up the folder and then open up the program, this will essentially allow us to start stress testing our program. So it'll give you an option between tests. And uh, if you go here to blend test, this one will test everything, even your RAM. And I find if there's a problem with the computer, this will usually get down to the bottom of it relatively quickly as opposed to uh, IDA64, which is the program that I was usually using for testing out CPU temperatures, which that does a great job of, but sometimes in that program, problems can slip through. So we're gonna leave this running now for as long as we can and see if the computer will crash. 2,000 years later. So after a little while of stress testing, our computer has completely froze. Nothing is responding. And if this happens, this is one of the types of errors you can get. You can also get a complete black screen as well in my experience as seeing a critical error 86 code, I believe it is. That's a quick blue screen and everything will just restart. Now, one thing I'm also gonna try, or actually gonna try two more things, and that is to quickly replace the memory again because it is probably just as likely that you could have two faulty sets of memory as it is that you would have a faulty CPU, if that makes any sense. And we're also gonna restart the computer and go into the BIOS and do something quickly. So now that we're in the BIOS, we can usually get here by hitting the delete or F2 key on the keyboard as soon as we start the machine. And when we're inside here, we can quickly hit F1. That'll bring up the help menu. And we should see here a setting called load optimized defaults or load default settings. And in this case, it's F5 on this particular motherboard. So we're gonna hit F5 and we're gonna hit enter. And then we're gonna find the exit tab and save changes and exit. Usually that's F10 key if you wanna shortcut the save changes and exit. So we're gonna quickly interlude before we try the next step now. And that has to do with this architecture of CPU specifically, and we'll look at that very soon. But if you do come into a problem like we saw here today, where your computer just completely freezes, doesn't even give you a blue screen, doesn't even give you anything else like an error message or things aren't working normally. It basically just gives you a cold hard freeze or the system just shuts off completely. In this very rare case, uh, you may be able to do a couple of things still. And that is if you're still in the warranty period of the CPU, and that's usually three years. So if you bought this CPU within three years and you have the receipt still, and it's from Intel and AMD, then you can usually get it replaced free of charge. But if your CPU is falling out of this warranty period, you're no longer covered, then there are some things you can try. 
and that's what we're going to get onto now. So let's get back to it. So now we're back on the desktop, we can open this program up called IDA64 and I'll put the link in the description below for this. You do get to use this for free for 30 days and that's all you're gonna need in this case anyway. So we'll open up this program and then we'll go to tools and we'll go to system stability test. And this should open up the stress test that we we're talking about earlier in the video, but this time it will show us temperatures of the CPU. Now we can also open up CPU ID and since this architecture is one that's called Haswell, and this CPU is an i7-4770, this was known to have temperature problems in that they used between the heat sink and the die, uh, they used a thing called thermal paste instead of soldering these together. And this did cause uh, major issues for a lot of people, especially overclockers who wanted to extract the most out of their CPUs. But regardless, we can see that our cooler is connected to this CPU absolutely fine, as indicated by these temperatures on the right here. They're hovering around 30 to 40 degrees, so our cooler is connected and it is idling okay. If these temperatures are going to 100 degrees or really high straight away, then you know you have an issue with this CPU cooler not connecting properly to the CPU. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna load this up. We're gonna start this stress test and we're gonna see how hot the CPU uh, gets after running this stress test for a few minutes. So now the CPU is unfortunately getting very hot. It's getting close to 100 degrees. On one of the cores, it actually got to 100 degrees. And you can tell it's not the CPU cooler because when you touch it, it should be getting very hot if it actually is a CPU cooler problem. In this case, I can leave my hands on the cooler. It's only a little bit warm. So what we're gonna do is take this CPU cooler off, take the CPU out, and then change the uh, paste between the die and the integrated heat spreader, and then run the tests again. And also another thing as well is the cable manager is definitely not how I remember leaving this thing when it left the studio all that time ago. Maybe we have a mystery on our hands, Scooby-Doo. It's called delitting. There's only certain CPUs you can actually do this on. Uh, the i7-4770 happens to be one of those CPUs. So I've got to say first impression so far, this CPU actually doesn't look too good. Uh, you see here the thermal paste is all dried up uh, and I'm guessing it's not doing too good of a job in terms of transferring heat from here to here. But regardless, let's clean all this up and put it back together. So now we've booted it all up again and the good news already is that our CPU temperatures are much lower. They seem to be stabilizing just under 70 degrees, which is great. We can see here actually a max of 74 already. So what we're gonna do now, however, is leave this on completely overnight and then see if it survives. But also I'm gonna still give you guys some pointers and tips if you crash or you come into this stage and you still have weird problems. So now I've left this on for about eight hours and the good news is it's hovering under 80 degrees, which is really good news. 
Considering it's about 26 degrees ambient in this room at the moment, which is still very hot for 6 a.m. in the morning, but my guess is with this PC, what happened was, is that the person who bought it, they bought it during winter in my defense. So this is the last thing I thought about was things getting hot too quickly. And when I tested it, when it left the studio, it was in really good nick because my higher end builds, I do guarantee them for quite a while. And so this is just one of those things where I think something happened in those previous six months. But the good news is the CPU is working now, but we're still gonna look at what you guys can do if you come into a similar scenario with an older CPU. So now we're back in the BIOS, and if you guys don't remember how to get there, when you boot up your computer, you hit the delete or F2 key. And here's where we can change a few things around. Sometimes in a rare case, if you've been using a CPU for a very long time, or you've bought a CPU off a person who's been overclocking it, sometimes that CPU over time can degrade. And uh, here we've got a few things you can do in this case to test this out. The first thing to do is just to grab the CPU core ratio here and simply go sync all cores. There should be a setting in your motherboard. If you don't have this setting, then we'll talk about another setting that you can do. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this all the way down to say 25. And it's very low, but it's going to test out if our CPU can survive at these speeds and not be faulty. So here we can go here as well, the max CPU uh, cache ratio, which is the same thing. It's a on this platform, the i7-4770, it has two factors that run at different clock speeds. So we're gonna set them both to 25. And then another thing, if you don't have these options to change the core speeds, you can go to a thing called CPU core voltage, which is right here on my favorites. Uh, but if we've got extreme tuner, we should be able to find it in these BIOS settings here. And I'll actually put a link uh, to a CPU overclocking tutorial if you guys wanna get familiar with this, but here we got CPU core voltage. We're gonna change this to one point. We're gonna go, I say enter, and go manual mode, and then type in 1.15 volts. And now what this is gonna do is it's going to overvolt the CPU a little bit. So we've got a combination of lowering the clock speeds and overvolting the CPU, which this time around, we don't really need to do this. I'm just illustrating the core voltage in case you don't have this setting here. So this will give your CPU a little bit more power. And so if it's not running at its default speeds because it's just very old, then you can try upping this as well. And then uh, just save changes and exit and you can give that a shot. So there it is with my PC build. It was the i7-4770 because I'd replaced every single component on this build but it wasn't in the way that I thought it would be. And so this was actually fixable in that when I replaced the thermal paste in between that heat spreader and the silicon itself, it did fix the problem. And I'm guessing when the person bought it, they were happy with it for a few months and then things just started overheating. And this can happen, it's just another problem that I'm going to have to look out for now if I do sell PCs and that's pretty much D-lid every Haswell CPU that comes through here because what Intel did with this architecture too to add to the problems was that they put the integrated voltage regulator on the actual CPU itself. And usually before that, they'd put it on the motherboard and that actually added heat to the CPU and inside things itself. So I'm grateful that my problem was fixable because the i7-4770, it's still quite an expensive CPU. However, also in my time with dealing with PCs, I have seen another two cases of CPUs being faulty. The first other case that I dealt with was a Q9550, wherein some of the computer just suddenly switched off. I'm guessing the computer got too hot. And then after that, the Q9550 never really worked the same again, in that it would have been slightly faulty, and I actually had to get it replaced. So in that case, I sent it back to the retailer, they sent me another CPU out, and things were all fixed in my computer. The other case that I have seen was an i7-7700K, and this just didn't work properly out of the box, and uh, we did manage to overvolt it, and then it did work again, but the thing was, it was still under warranty. So again, we sent that one back and got it replaced. So there is some weird cases that you can come into with a faulty CPU. Now, if it's definitely still covered by warranty, I implore you guys to go get it switched over because it will give you headaches going forward. 
as we said before in the intro, the CPU is the main component in any computer. If that doesn't work properly, everything else is not going to work properly. But unfortunately, if you are out of warranty, then you can try doing the two things that we did in today's video. So if you enjoyed this one, then be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you have ever come into a faulty CPU and you fixed it or you replaced it, or you know someone who's come into a faulty CPU, or you're still having problems, let us know in the comments section below. Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon where we have something dark, something Star Wars-y. You guys have been waiting for this video for a very long time. So if you wanna see it the moment it drops, be sure to hit that sub button, turn that notification bell on. And also if you wanna check out an inside scoop before it even gets to YouTube, Instagram Tech Yes City. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.